Hello, runners. We are in week five. Congratulations, you were almost there. Uh, so we have done week one, week two, week three, week four, week five. We're going to start to add a little bit of power. So we'll do a little bit of orientation. Uh, we'll talk about what the program is going to look like. Um, and there is going to be a new component that we add that we'll talk about a little bit uh, at the very end of this introduction. Um, so as I said, we are in week five. In week five, we're going to add some power. And when we're looking at the structure of week five, it looks kind of similar to month three here and what we used initially in the initial introduction uh, to kind of outline what we're doing with the pyramid, where we're going to start with foundation work in week one and two. We're going to add a little bit of strength in week three. We're going to add some more strength in week four. And then in week five and six, we're going to add some power. So here in week five, which is this bar right here representation, the volume of the foundational work that we're going to do is going to drop uh, quite a bit from the last couple of weeks. We're going to still do some strength work, which is that purple bar, and we're going to add a little bit of power work, which is the green bar. The thing about power is that um, a little bit goes a long way, and we don't have any weights, so we're going to use kind of a plyometric um, kind of a methodology to start to integrate some of this power work into our program. Um, so we'll talk about that a little bit as we get out into the gym and start to work on it. So we are going to do a dynamic flexibility routine today. The dynamic flexibility routine today is going to be a little bit more dynamic. It's going to be a little bit more ballistic. Uh, the work rate is going to be a little bit higher. We're going to add a little bit more plyometric uh, uh, components into the program at the very end. And the last few exercises in the dynamic warm-up program will be some skills and drills, some things that runners like to do just to start to work on the technique of their running mechanics. Uh, so that's going to be a little bit shorter today, but the work rate is going to be a little bit higher just to give you another variation of what a dynamic warm-up might look like. And this particular warm-up really starts to prepare you to do some of the power work that we're going to do today as well. So those two kind of jive. Uh, the second thing that we're going to do is uh, core and hips. So last week we did some foot strength work. Uh, this week we're not going to do it. If you really feel like you like that, then carry that into this week or the next couple of weeks. And again, I, I want to clarify, you know, we're calling this week five, but this is really just the fifth installment in the series. We know that a lot of you out there are doing week one for a couple of weeks, week two for a couple of weeks. So you might be in week 10, 12, 15. I have no idea. But this is a fifth installment. If you like the foot strength that we included in the fourth installment, then carry it into, into this next installment, into the fifth section of the strength conditioning program. We're not going to go through it again today, though. Uh, so you have to go back to week four if you want to pull that back out. The core and the hips, because we're decreasing the overall volume of the foundational work, we're going to do less work for hips and core. Uh, all of the hip work is going to be standing today. That's a little bit more functional. And all of the core work is going to be a little bit more complicated. We're going to add a little bit of weight to it. Um, so we're going to decrease the volume, but we're going to increase the complexity. Um, for the strength section, we are going to do a ladder. So I've made another uh, piece of our board up here. So we're going to do squats and lunges, and we're going to do that in a way that we're going to do pulses. So we're going to get into a squat position, we're going to come down into the bottom of the squat, we're going to pulse five times, come up for a brief second, and then go straight back down, pulse 10 times, come back, out, uh, come back up, and then go and pulse for 15 times. So we're going to do that in a squat position, then we're going to go straight to a lunge position and do the same 5, 10, 15 ladder, other lunge position, 5, 10, 15 ladder, and then we're going to go through that again. Squats, ladder, lunges ladder, and then the other um, position, lunges ladder. So that'll be our strength work today. The amount of strength work is a little bit less today than it was in week four because we have to add some power work. So the strength work goes down, power work gets included. For the power work today, we're gonna to be using some plyometric exercises, um, which start to work on contraction velocity. Plyometrics also start to work on uh, the inherent elasticity built within our musculoskeletal system. Um, Plyometrics are not the only power exercise, but in the absence of weight and in the absence of proper coaching, we're just going to kind of substitute some plyometric work into the power component. Um, so we'll talk about that a little bit more when we get out to the gym. So that will be the program in the fifth installment of this sixth installment program, six week program. Um, and also we're going to have Lindsay on Wednesday of next week. So week five, fifth installment will drop on Monday. And on Wednesday, Lindsay is going to do a very special cluster of exercises for us regarding the pelvic floor. And this is something that we mentioned, I think, in week two that we might circle back around to. There's been a fair amount of interest in, in uh, emails that we've gotten asking us if we'll actually plug that in. 
So instead of building that into week five, we're gonna make its own cluster, and we're gonna drop that video on Wednesday, and we're gonna have Lindsay explain that. And I'm gonna see if my uh, media guy can do some magic, and if I snap my fingers, we'll see if she can just magically appear and give us a brief look at what that might look like. Um. Hey guys, so like David said, um, we've had quite a bit of interest about integrating um, the public floor into our program. Um, and so I'm gonna take you guys through a series of exercises and talk to you about what the public floor is, um, why it's important and how we can kind of integrate it into the things that David and I have spent the past five weeks working on. Um, with that being said, we know that runners and lifters and anyone who increases their intra-abdominal pressure to a greater extent often tend to see pelvic floor dysfunction, whether that looks like incontinence or pain, um, you know, that being pelvic pain or back pain. So this is a highly prevalent conversation that we need to have. Um, and we're anticipating that you guys are runners and a lot of you are maybe moms, um, you know, have had um, hysterectomies or surgeries or abdominal surgeries, um, and we're hoping that we can help you out um, in the world of pelvic floor. So stay tuned. Thanks. Week five, dynamic flexibility. Uh, we're gonna work on each one of these elements for 20 seconds. Uh, Lindsay's gonna keep track of our time again, like she has been doing for the last few weeks. Uh, all of these exercises are gonna be standing. They're gonna be a little bit more dynamic. We're gonna get into some ballistic plyometric exercises near the end. There's only one exercise where we're going to be in a front plank position on the ground. Um, so let's just get into it. We are going to start with knee to chest for 20 seconds. Lindsay's keeping track. Yeah. So for the first few of these are going to be the exercises that we were doing in week one and week two. We're going to do a couple of exercises that were in week three and week four. Um, and then ultimately we're going to be doing more stuff that is new to you in week five. And again, that's going to be a little bit more dynamic, a little bit more ballistic, starting to get your heart rate up a little bit higher, getting your... Uh, core temperature up a little bit higher in preparation for going into more of a strength in a power based program today. So now we're going heel to butt for 20 seconds. Making sure that we're breathing, making sure that we're not pulling so hard that we're pulling our pelvis forward just like that. So these should be very familiar at this point. We've done these quite a few times. You've probably done these a lot over the last uh, four weeks. Next is crossover and touch. Hold for a second, switch, cross over and touch. Good work. 20 seconds, and if you want to spin off to the side, you can spin towards the leg that's behind you to increase the stretch a little bit. So in this case, we're going to reach off to the right a little bit for 20 seconds. And lunge, reach, and rotate. So we're pairing these together. So we're getting into a nice big lunge, getting a big stretch in the front of the hip of the leg that's behind us. We're gonna reach them, we're gonna rotate over that front leg, hold for about a second each, then come up, and we'll go straight back into it. We're gonna do 20 seconds on each side? Yeah. All right, 20 seconds each side. Big lunge, stretch, reach, and rotate. Try to create as much distance between your fingertips as you can. When you're reaching up, try to get length. Don't arch back, you're trying to get length. When you rotate, you're trying to get length. Keep your chest open, make sure you're breathing. It's easy to hold your breath when you rotate. Make sure that you're breathing. Did we switch? Yes. We switch. Lindsay we didn't switch. even tell us, so hopefully you guys are watching. Subtle, pay attention. Oh, it should come up. Yes, yeah, so it should come up. <laughs> yeah. And piece this up so you do the lunge, then you do the reach. Then you do the rotate, hold in each position for a couple of seconds. Lunge, reach, rotate. Very good. Okay. And uh, we're going to do uh, triangle stretch. So this is another oh. variation of that lunge position. So we're going to get into a lunge position. If the right leg is forward, you're going to reach our left hand down towards the ground. Then we're going to rotate up toward the sky. This is probably going to give you a stretch in the back of that right hip. Then you're going to come back up and you're gonna switch. Let's do the other side. We're going back and forth. Let's do 30 seconds here. Okay. Alternating back and forth, lunging, rotating, so that one hand's on the ground. The other hand, you're trying to get reaching straight toward the ceiling, creating length between your fingertips. Making sure that when you rotate, you don't let the knee fly out to the side. So try to keep everything in nice alignment as you rotate. Don't let that swing out. Make sure you're breathing. We're gonna do this for 30 seconds, so we'll end up doing about 15 seconds on each side. Lunge, 
reach, rotate, very nice. And now we're gonna do uh, front swing. So let's, yeah, that's fine, you can face this way. So we're gonna have one leg straight, we're just gonna be kicking it forward and back, forward and back. Try to get it, get it up as high as you can in front of you. Try to get it nice and far behind you. Make sure that we're not really bending through our spine. So let's stay up a little bit, yeah, like that. So don't do that. So stay up nice and tall through your spine, through your torso. Kicking one leg forward, kicking it back. We're doing this for 20 seconds, then we'll switch. 20 seconds and we're gonna switch. So this is working on balance on one leg. You're swinging the other leg through. Nice and controlled, keep your balance, keep breathing, keep your torso long. Don't flex forward, don't extend too far back. And almost knocked off balance. 20. 20, now we're doing lateral swing. So go up to a wall, you just need to have a little bit of support. So now we're gonna swing one leg across midline. So up nice and high to the side, swing it across midline. As you swing across midline, you can rotate your pelvis a little bit. So you don't need to keep your pelvis totally parallel to the wall. You're gonna swing for 20 seconds each side. Very nice. And next is gonna be swing drive. So we're still facing into the wall. So we're gonna swing one leg back behind us and then as we come forward, we're gonna drive up into the wall. This is similar to the lunge to wall drive that we did in the strength session uh, in week four. So we're just gonna swing the leg back, swing it forward, come up nice and high on the toe, on this left leg, making sure the leg is behind you. Uh, you really can't see from this perspective, but Lindsay's trying to get extension through that hip. She's trying to get the glute engaged on that standing leg. She's keeping the front leg nice and high so we can balance a hot cup of coffee on it. She's gonna do a set of uh, 20 seconds on each side. Yep. Now we're switching, doing the other side. Swing, drive, pause. So we wanna pause just for a second when we get to that uh, running position. So we're not gonna come straight out of it. We're gonna swing, swing, drive and pause for a second. Good job, we're doing 20 seconds on each side. And now we're gonna do some pogo jumps. So we're getting, getting into some more uh, ballistic dynamic exercises. We're gonna do 10 second low pogo jumps. And then halfway through 10 seconds, we're gonna get a little bit higher. If you feel okay just keeping the low amplitude, then keep the low amplitude. If you wanna jump a little bit higher, then feel free. So Lindsay's going into the higher jumps. She's gonna do a set of 10 seconds here. Then we'll take a little bit of a break before we get into the next one. And now we're gonna do squat jumps. So we're gonna do 20 seconds. We're gonna do mini squat jumps first. And for the second 10 seconds, we're gonna to start to jump up a little bit higher. If you wanna stay with the mini squats, with the little squats, then go for it. If you wanna add some height 10 seconds through, then go for it. Make sure that your body's ready for it. Good work. So we're gonna do 10 seconds. Make sure you're breathing. Keep it rhythmic. Make sure your knees aren't diving in as you're landing. So keep your knees over your feet. Good work, and now we're getting into mountain climbers. So here is your plank position and driving one knee forward, uh, back and forth. So you can keep this kind of quick and rhythmic. We're gonna do this for 20 seconds. If you wanna go a little bit slower, go a little bit slower. If you wanna go faster, then you can go faster. So you'll probably, probably notice that as we go through this series, uh, the heart rate's gonna get a little bit higher, you're, you're gonna be sweating a little bit earlier, uh, and that's the intent as we build up from week two to three to four to five. So here we're gonna do high knees. We did these last time. Get those knees nice and high, sweep those arms in unison. We're gonna do this for 20 seconds. Lindsay's breathing hard. I might be too close to the camera. You might be freaking out our audience. <laughs> Running towards them. Okay. And she's running out of breath already. So we're gonna do butt kickers. Butt kicks. So we're not taking much break in between. We're trying to get you warm. That's why it's a warm up. So 20 seconds of butt kickers. Keeping her chest up nice and high, keeping those arms swinging. And Lindsay's gonna let us know when we're 20 seconds through. And dino walks, so getting into the hamstrings. Kicking, touching, 
and then switch, kick, oh, and balance, and touch. It's that right leg is coming back to Hannes. Kick and touch, kick and touch. So as you're hinging forward, you're gonna feel a stretch in the hamstring on the leg that's on the ground. As you kick in front of you, you're gonna feel the stretch in the hamstring of the leg that's swinging out in front of you. So we're getting a dynamic stretch in the moving leg. We're getting kind of a long, slower stretch in the standing leg uh, in the hamstrings. Doing a set of 20 seconds and we are done. So now we are gonna do uh, A skips. So A skips, it's kind of like a skipping routine. If you've never done A skips, these can be a little bit challenging. It's kind of like a skip, we're getting the knee nice and high. The foot's touching twice. Boom, 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 boom. Swing the arms in unison, make sure we're keeping those knees nice and high. Make sure that we're kind of attacking the ground a little bit. So we want to have a little bit of force into the ground, just like we were sprinting. And last one is going to be C skips. So legs coming up to the front and then out to the side. Front, side, front, side. This is going to be a little bit harder to coordinate with your arms, but try to coordinate your arms with your legs. Make sure that you're breathing. This is going to be our last exercise for the dynamic warm up in week five. And Lindsay's ready for it to be over. Good. Good work. Warmed up. Week five, core and hip strength. Uh, so this is going to be a little bit less volume than we did in week one, two, three, and four because in week five, we're going to decrease the overall volume of the foundational work because we have some strength work and we're going to add some power work today. All of the standing or all of the hip strength is going to be standing today. Uh, the core work is going to include, she has a five pound weight. If you have a hand weight, you can use a hand weight anywhere from three to six pounds. Mm -hmm. If you don't have a hand weight, you can use a Nalgene bottle full of water, or any water bottle, yeah. a bottle of wine, a bottle of, of wine, can of soup. You can drink the wine after the program is over. Uh, just anything that has a little bit of weight. So the core work is gonna be less volume. We're still gonna work for 20 to 30 seconds. It's gonna be a little bit more challenging today, even though we have less exercises. Uh, then we're also gonna throw some hamstring work back into the program. We hit on that maybe in week two. We did some hamstring work. We're gonna bring it back in week five. So uh, we're gonna do standing clamshells first. So Lindsay has her band around her knees. Let's give them a second to get the band around their knees. Uh. And we'll assume that you have your band around your knees. And Lindsay's gonna go, we're doing 20 repetitions on each side. So for the standing hip work, we're gonna go for repetitions. For the core work, we're gonna stay with time intervals of 20 to 30 seconds. So you can count on your own or you can just kind of go in the same cadence as Lindsay and we'll hit close to 20. 19, 20, switch. And we're gonna switch. So some of the cues that you should be familiar with at this point, we're keeping the pelvis nice and stable. That's why Lindsay has her hands on the pelvis, making sure that it's not rotating one way or the other or dropping. And we're trying to get nice separation between the knees. The moving leg is coming out and back. It's not coming just out to the side, it's coming out and back, kind of spinning your legs open. Go to set of 20 on each side, trying to maintain that balance. Good work, now we're going standing Jane Fondas or standing kickbacks. We're gonna put the band down around our ankles. We're stand up nice and tall and we're just gonna kick back and try to keep the balance in that left foot or whatever foot you're on at this point. So don't bring the foot back and kind of recenter yourself and then kick and then recenter. So we wanna have that foot off the ground the entire time because we wanna make this exercise robust. We wanna add a stability component to it in addition to it being a strength exercise. Also make sure that you're not really flexed forward. So keep your chest up nice and tall, keep your spine long just like you would if you were running. We switched. And we switched. And we're doing uh, 20 more on this side. Stand up nice and tall, keeping that pelvis nice and level. And now we're gonna put the band, uh, let's put the band around the ankles. So now we're gonna be in a squat position and we're just gonna step side to side in place. So here we're gonna do a set of 30, three, four, five. Taking a nice wide step, making sure that we keep our knees over our feet so don't let the knees dive in towards midline. Make sure that we're kind of staying at the same level so we're not coming down and up, down and up. We're staying down the entire time, which is gonna keep some load in our legs. You'll likely feel this in the back of your hips, in your glutes, probably also in your quads because we're in that squat position. 
You want to set a 30 all together, so 15 each side alternating. Lindsay's counting for us. That was 30. 30. And next we're going to have the band still around the feet. Now, this is similar, but we're, we're going to kind of move forward and move backwards. So these are called monster walks. So we're going to do 30 total. So she's stepping forward, forward, back, back, and then switching forward, forward, back, back, trying to keep separation between the feet. So we don't want you to let the foot swing forward as you come out. So we don't want this kind of a motion. We want you to keep that separation forward, forward, back, back. Keeping that separation when the foot comes up off the ground is gonna mean that you have to use that glute strength to keep that separation. If your foot comes up off the ground and it just slingshots in, then you've lost that glute strength and control. So keep separation between your feet, keep your pelvis nice and level, make sure that you're breathing. Lindsay's counting for us, yeah. so you can just kind of go by her, what number you want? It's 26. 26, so we're getting close. Good work, 30. Uh, we are gonna take the bands off. So now we're gonna do some of the slider exercises. So if you have a slippery floor, then you're gonna use either socks or towels. Lindsay's gonna use some towels. We just need uh, there to be some uh, kind of decrease in friction so that we can actually slide. So we're gonna do those same hamstring sliders that we had worked on uh, in week, I think it was two. Yeah. So we're gonna do a set of six eccentric hamstring exercises each side. First, and then we're gonna do 20 seconds of hamstring polishes or floor polishers, which we'll uh, get into. Then we're doing another set of six eccentrics and then another set of 20 seconds floor polishers. So Lindsay is gonna start. She's gonna lift up one leg and she's gonna slide out. Lindsay just made a horrible face. She already doesn't like this exercise on the first repetition. So you're trying to go out kind of slow and controlled, trying to get that, that uh, foot almost entirely away from you before you let the pelvis come down. The further that foot slides away from you, the more load you're gonna have in the hamstring. So if you need to drop your butt down before your knee is totally straight, then go for it. So you're coming up, sliding out, and then coming up, sliding out. So we're doing a set of six on one side. Then we're gonna switch. Lindsay lost her towel. Lost her towel. And now she's gonna do a set of six on the other side. And if you feel like you can only do four or five, then go for four or five. If you need to come a little bit faster, you can go a little bit faster. Going slow is gonna mean that you have more time under tension. It's gonna make the exercise a little bit more challenging. So the idea is we wanna be slow and controlled, but if you need to speed it up a little bit to get through the exercise in a way that makes you feel comfortable, then that's okay. Um, you know, as we have said, in some instances, increasing the speed of an exercise makes it more challenging. This actually decreasing the speed makes it more challenging. So after six on each side, Lindsay's gonna have towels under both of her heels. We're going for 20 seconds, Lindsay's keeping track. And we're just sliding back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Lindsay assured me that she's gonna be able to do 20 seconds easily. I thought that that might've been a little bit much. She'll tell us when it's been 10 seconds in case you wanna stop at 10 seconds. That's 10. But she's gonna go for 20 seconds. Keep going. She is a boss. And 20. 20 seconds, cool. So we're gonna take a little bit of a break. We're gonna go back into another set of six of those eccentric elongating single leg exercises. We're gonna do another set of 20 seconds of the floor polishers. So Lindsay is ready, she's gonna go into it. Making sure with this one that you're keeping your core nice and strong. Making sure that you're keeping your pelvis nice and level. So our hot cup of coffee right now goes right on your belt buckle. So when you let that other foot go, don't let the pelvis rotate. Don't collapse like a taco. Keep everything nice and stable. Make sure that you're breathing. It's easy to hold your breath with this one because it takes a lot of core strength to maintain the pelvic stability as you elongate that hamstring. So Lindsay's going for six. If you want to do less repetitions, then that's up to you. These are pretty challenging. These are a fairly advanced exercise. But Lindsay ordered them up for today. I think that she feels like she needs to work on her hamstrings. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to you doing what Lindsay needs. Yeah. Well, about me. Okay. All right, so we're gonna take a little bit of a break and now we're gonna do 20 more seconds of those polishers. Lindsay's gonna keep track of the time for us. She'll let us know when it's been 10 seconds in case you wanna cut it off at 10 seconds. Here she goes. She's breathing. 
move nice and quick. Maintaining a positive attitude, being optimistic that she's gonna be able to get through 20 seconds. That's 10. So we're gonna now go into our core series. Uh, this is gonna be most of what we've already done. We're gonna progress things a little bit. Last week we did some regressions from week three. Um, this week we're gonna do some progressions, but we're gonna limit the amount of exercises that we do and we're gonna add a little bit of weight. So Lindsay has a five pound weight. Uh, if you don't already have your weight or your wine bottle or your can of soup, then we'll give you a couple of seconds. I'll move this out of the way and then we'll get into it. We're gonna do these for 30 seconds. Lindsay's gonna keep track of the time like she always does. She'll tell us when it's 20 seconds in case you want to shorten the uh, work duration and lengthen your rest duration. So the first thing that we're gonna do are the flutter kicks that we've done before. Lindsay has a weight up over her head and she's gonna drop it back a little bit. And let's go for 30 seconds. So having the weight in her hands over her head is gonna increase the amount of load on her core, which is gonna make it harder for her to keep her back nice and flat. The more you drop that weight, the more it's going to want to pull your back up off the ground and the harder it's going to be for your core. So if you want to have it straight over your face, that's the easiest variation. If you want to bring it back over your head, the further you go, the harder it's going to be. 20. It's 20 seconds, so we have 10 more seconds. And you can always start in a more aggressive position and then move the weight into a less aggressive position over the duration of the exercise. That's always an option. So we're going to have about 10 seconds of a rest. And then we're gonna go into the crisscross exercise where we have the weight in the same position over our head if we wanna be aggressive, right over our face if we wanna be a little bit less aggressive. So Lindsay is starting in the aggressive position. She's keeping her core nice and strong. She's not holding her breath. She's keeping her back flat to the ground and her legs are crossing midline. You might not be able to see that uh, from your vantage point. She'll let us know when it's been 20 seconds and then she's gonna go for 30 seconds. Me. 10 more seconds. Three, two, one. There we go. We're going to rest for about 10 seconds. So take a little bit of a recovery. Next, we're going to go into the split crunch where we have one foot hovering off the ground, the other foot's high in the air. And we're reaching the weight towards that toe and then we're switching. Um, the weight's going to make it harder. If you're ready for it, then you can use the weight. If you're not ready for it, then don't use the weight. If you want to do the first 10, 15, 20 seconds with the weight and then drop the weight and do the rest of it without the weight, that's totally fine. That's up to you. It's up to your prerogative. Lindsay's already struggling a little bit. She's probably regretting suggesting that we use the weight today for the progressions. Five pounds is heavy. Five pounds is heavy. That's 20. <laughs> Three, two, one. Work. We're going to take 10 seconds. And then we're going to be in a side plank position. So we have a couple in a side plank position. Uh, I guess only one in a side plank position today, yeah? Side plank and rotation? Yeah. So we only have one in a side plank position today, but we're going to add some rotation and we're going to use our weight for this one. Mm -hmm. So this one might be tough to get through 30 seconds, but Lindsay's going to do it. I'm going to do it. And she'll let us know when it's been 20 seconds. So she's in that side plank position. She's reaching the weight down, almost like she's kind of threading through her arm that's down. Then she's coming up, reaching the weight straight toward the ceiling. So this is getting a lot of lateral core strength. This is also getting some rotational strength. She's doing a great job breathing. She's staying nice and flat, so she's not folded up like a taco. That's 20. It's 20 seconds. She's not breathing that hard, so maybe she's pretty strong in this exercise. At least she's faking it well. <laughs> Fake it till you make it. Okay, other side. And we're gonna switch. Three, and after about a 10 second break, two, we're gonna get into it. One. Very nice. And a regression of this exercise would be similar to what we did last week. So she could be on her knees in a short plank position. Oh. Yeah, so she can be in that short plank position, um, but if she wants to be aggressive, then she can be in that long plank position. That's 20. So we have 10 more seconds.
And done. Bingo. So we do not need to wait for uh, the next cube. We're going to be on our stomach. This one is called Superman's. Uh, and when Lindsay's ready, she is going to demonstrate it. We're going to go for 30 seconds. And she'll let us know when it's been 20 seconds. So you can uh, stop there if you would like to. So you're just lifting both your chest and your feet and knees up off the ground at the same time. You're going to feel a lot of effort. Uh, probably through your low back, through uh, your between your scapula and the glutes and the hamstrings. So this is getting a lot of the muscles through the whole posterior uh, kind of aspect of the body. She's going to do this for 30 seconds, as I said. She'll yeah. let us know when it's 20. We're probably getting close. 20 right there. 20 seconds right there. So if you feel like you're getting pain in the back and not just a, a sense of effort, then decrease the motion a little bit. You can also just lift just the legs or just the arms. That'll make it a little bit easier. There you go, nice. And <laughs> done. she is done. So you're now gonna go into a complicated exercise. We're gonna take a little bit of time to explain this and then we'll go into it. So there are three variations. One is a standard bird dog where we're gonna be in a quadruped position and we're just um, reaching out opposite arm, opposite leg, trying to keep the pelvis nice and stable, keep that hot cup of coffee right there on your sacrum. That is level one. Uh, level two is going to be this position here. We're in a full plank position and we're going shoulder, shoulder, lift the foot, lift the foot, shoulder tap, shoulder tap, lift the foot, lift the foot. All right, take a break. So that is level two. Level three, the most challenging variation, which Lindsay's going to do for 30 seconds, yeah. maybe. We're going <laughs> to be in that nice full plank position, which is extending opposite arm, opposite leg. This is a really challenging exercise. It takes a lot of core strength. It takes a lot of balance. It takes a lot of optimism. So let's take a break, and we're all gonna start this together. Now you can also start in a more aggressive variation and then regress down to something that's a little bit less aggressive. That's totally fine. Lindsay might end up doing that. But I think that she is gonna start with level three, full plank. And here we go, 30 seconds. She'll let us know when it's been 20 seconds. So pick the variation that you want to do, pick the variation that you want to start with and do a little bit of a regression or start with an easier exercise. And if you feel good, you can progress to the more challenging variation. That's totally fine. So that's been about three seconds. Lindsay's going to go for 30. That's 20. That's 20 seconds. We have 10 more seconds. Lindsay's going to make it. So make sure that you try to stay nice and flat. So don't let your butt come really high up in the air. Don't let it sag down. Lindsay's going to make it. She's trying to impress everybody in the international audience. And she's going to do it. But she's struggling. We have one more exercise of the core series. We're going to be on our stomach. And we are going to be doing swimmers. So this is similar to what we just did with the Superman. We're getting the same muscles. So we're getting the hamstrings. We're getting the glutes. We're getting the low back. She's gonna have her legs fluttering back and forth like she's kicking through the water. And then she's just doing these big breaststroke motions, which she will ultimately start to feel between her shoulder blades, up in her shoulders. This is pretty challenging. We're gonna do it for 30 seconds. She'll let us know when it's 20 seconds. And then to end the course series, Lindsay's gonna tell us another dad joke. <laughs> We've had a lot of requests for her to tell more jokes during these sessions. So she's been working on them. That's 20. 10 more seconds and then you get a dad joke. Three, two, one. Okay, your dad joke of the week. So, I bought a pair of shoes from a drug dealer yesterday. I don't know what he laced them with, but I was tripping all day. That one's for you, Chris Ramsey. <laughs> Just let that go for like five seconds. So everybody got a little bit of a Lindsay dance break. All right, so we are gonna get into our functional cluster and for the dynamic warm-up, we changed some things. Uh, we made it a little bit more challenging, a little bit uh, kind of more ballistic. Uh, for the hips and the core, we made that a little bit more challenging, even though we decreased the volume and we changed some things up. We're not gonna change anything in the functional cluster because these are already pretty complicated and they're pretty robust. So we are not gonna do as many um, sets as we did in week four. Uh, so we're gonna do one set of each of these. So the first one we're gonna do is the lateral runner lunge with the toe touch. So Lindsay is going to demonstrate. She's going to reach out to the side, to the lunge. She's going to come up into an overhead press position. Then she's going to hinge down, do the toe touch, and then come back up. That's one. So we're going to do six to eight on each side. Lindsay is going to do the full eight on each side. If you want to do five or six or seven, 
feel free, it's up to you. Make sure that we're reaching nice and low, make sure that we're maintaining a really good balance. Get a lot of length as you reach that weight up over your head and come down a little bit slow as you touch the ground. If you wanna add a little bit of speed to this exercise, the speed is gonna come from this position up. So from there, we can come up a little bit faster. We can turn that overhead press into what's called a snatch, where it's one movement from the ground all the way up. So here we're starting to add a little bit of speed, which creates contraction velocity, which starts to not just a little bit closer to power. Moving weight with speed is what delineates power away from strength. Lindsay's doing a great job. Even though I hate giving her compliments, we'll find some things that she's not doing well. She's on the left leg. When she gets to the right leg, yeah. we can start to ridicule her. I always start with the left one. She always starts with the left. Get my confidence to really up. Really impress the audience. Okay, that was eight. That was eight. So we're going to switch Other over side. to the right leg. Reaching. Ooh, pretty good balance today. But she's been working That's on these because she's tired of me ridiculing her in front of our audience. That's one. So we do six to eight. Lindsay also just told me that her parents are doing this routine every Thursday night. Hi, Mom and Dad. I love Team Prudencia. And also her twin sister is doing this, right? With she her is, fiance. yeah, with her fiance. Hi, Sam. Hi, Lauren. So about five or six of our, I guess that's four. That's four, parents, that's four of the five Provencios. Four of the five Provencios have done this. Yeah, you gotta get the little bro on board. So hopefully at this point your balance is getting a little bit better as we talked about last week in week four. Coming from this lateral position and then trying to balance as you're coming lateral is really challenging. A lot more challenging than if you're trying to come up in that sagittal plane and trying to balance. That becomes a little bit easier because our foot is longer than it is wide. So trying to balance over kind of that short uh, kind of width of the foot becomes pretty challenging. Yeah. Lindsay did a great job. She's impressing her family. That's it. Good so job, family. Guys. Good job, fam. <laughs> All right, so next we're gonna go into the runner snatch um, with a reverse lunge. So we're hinging forward. We're gonna use that speed, bring that weight straight up. We're gonna balance there, checking with our posture, reach back, and then come up quick out of that reverse lunge. Lindsay did a pretty good job. So she's gonna snatch up, balance, check in, reach back slow and controlled, drive forward, great job, and balance. We're gonna do one set of these, six to eight repetitions. Liz is gonna do the full eight. Making sure that as you're doing that reverse lunge, you're not letting the knee dive in towards midline. Keep that knee right over your foot, come up nice and tall. When you're in that running position, make sure that you're not leaning back. So keep your chest up and forward. That's gonna keep the weight in your forefoot. If you feel the weight back in your heel, then I want you to lean forward a little bit, get that chest up and forward. We want the weight in the forefoot, but not on your toes. You shouldn't feel like you're gonna cantilever forward, but you should feel that the weight is kind of up in the ball of the foot. What number are we at here, Lindsay? Seven. Seven, she has one more. Then we have one more exercise in the functional series. So the functional series is going to be a little bit shorter today because we still have the strength and we're going to add some power today. The last one was done with a little bit of gusto. She came up pretty quick. She was happy that it was over. <laughs> My calf's <is> burning. <laughs> so the third exercise. Wait, 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 we have to do the other side. Oh, we have to do the other we gotta side. Do, we got to do my uh, we have to do right, the right side. side. That's important. All right. Coming up nice and quick, back slow, driving up quick. If you don't want to add the speed, you don't have to add the speed. Normally what we find, if you feel pretty good about your technique, as long as you're balanced in this position, when you come up, you're going to be able to use that contraction velocity and stick that position. If you're back here and you're in a bad position and then you try to come up quickly, then you're going to fall off balance. So if you check in with that lunge position, make sure that everything feels stacked up and lined up and you feel nice and stable, coming up quick is going to feel a lot easier. Lindsay's been working at this. That right, leg, that right leg isn't even shaking that much today. Your parents are going to be proud. You're going to be so proud of me. Last one. Cool. Nice. Cool. Great job. This is also going a really good job. Of she's not bending backwards. Like I said, she's staying up and forward. It's really good. One more exercise in the functional cluster is going to be the hot salsa with the rotations. So we're going to be in that lunge position. She is going to come up, turn, and oh. rotate over that leg. This is really challenging. Then she's going to come back to that lunge position, 
We're going to rotate at the bottom too, so we'll rotate it over this leg at the bottom. Oh, okay. So we're going to rotate over the front leg at the bottom. We're going to come up to a running position, get nice and stable. We're going to rotate over that leg. This is the hardest part of the entire exercise. And that's two. We're going to do six to eight on each side. Are you doing six or eight? I'm doing eight. He's doing eight. You guys are doing eight too. Everybody's doing Mom eight. Mom and Dad, you're doing eight. <laughs> This is really challenging because we're balancing on one foot, the left foot in this case. We're bringing the weight across the line to the right and our arms become these long levers that are holding a relatively light weight, which increases the amount of load that you have to kind of neuromuscularly coordinate through core strength, hip strength, stability, proprioception. This right here gets just a lot of really good things and it's a very complicated exercise. Even though it looks like it should be easy, Maybe it doesn't look like it should be easy, but no, it is no. not easy. This is seven. Seven. And one more on this side. And at this point, you probably feel like your feet might be burning, your calves might be burning, that's totally fine. If your foot starts to cramp, then maybe take a break, kind of cycle it out, pedal it out a little bit, and then get back into it burning and kind of like tightness in the foot is okay. If it starts to cramp, then don't feel like you have to work through that. Good job, that's one. I'm also realizing now that over the last couple of weeks, we haven't made fun of Lindsay's lack of rotation. I remember one way she was limited, either right or to the left. To the left. To the left, but at this point, I'm not noticing it, so I can't make fun of her. So it clearly means that she's been working on it. And hopefully you in the audience have also been noticing some improvements in some of the things that you might have found to be an asymmetry or an imbalance. This is a great model of how much progress can be made if you stay diligent to the exercises. Because you're being shamed. <laughs> <laughs> Makes a difference when your ego's on the line. Mm -hmm. Number we on? That was six, two more. Six, we have two more. And then we're gonna move on to strength, and then we're gonna move on to power. The new cluster today. Eight. Very good. Eight. All right, we are gonna do our strength session. We have another special guest, this is Merritt. She is an eight-time veteran of professional soccer in the WSL. She has won how many? Three championships, Three championships. with uh, the WSL, two national championships in college, which was going to UNC. Mm -hmm. Did I miss anything? I mean, you missed a lot. You might have fumbled through. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> the introduction was, was a little clumsy, <laughs> but it doesn't matter. This is not about the introduction. So we're going to do our strength series. So we're going to walk you through what that looks like, and then Hopefully we're going to all do it together. Hopefully my lungs are better than that intro. <laughs> oh my God. Now I'm getting ridiculed. She's seen me ridiculing Lindsay, so now I'm getting ridiculed. Stay back. So here's what we're going to be doing. So we're going to get into a squat position. And so just watch us first, and then we're going to all start together. We're going to do five pulses in the squat position. And after five pulses, we're going to come up, and they're going to come back down and do 10 pulses. And then we're going to all come up. They're going to go down and do 15 pulses. And after that, we're going to get into a lunge position and follow that same ladder, where we're going to come down and do five pulses in a lunge position. Merritt almost fell over. I saw that. And then we're going to come up, then back down. So we're going to stay in the same lunge position. Then we're going to do 10 pulses, come up, 15 pulses, come up, switch lunge positions, and then do the 5, 10, 15 ladder again. And then we're going to do that two times through. So then we'll go through squats again, lunges, and lunges. So get ready. Let's get into the squat position. Here we go. Feet short with the part. Feet short with the part. And we're going to all get down in the squat position. And we're going to go one, two, three, four, five. Come up and then back down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Coming back up and then back down. Fifteen, two, three, Lizzie, four, really getting into five, it quick. six, seven, <laughs> eight, nine, ten. Style points, man. Oh, that was 15. 15. 15. Sorry, I told you not to 12, look at me. 13, 14, 15, lunge position. We're just going to keep this rolling. We're having fun. This is going to be fun. We've all been inside way too long. 
So kind of count on your own. We're going to do okay, a set five. of five pulses. We're going to come okay. up just for a quick, quick break. Straight back into it for 10 pulses. And then after 10 pulses, we'll take a break. And then this time, we're going to do the full 15. Ten. Unlike what we did last time. <laughs> we're going to do 15 pulses here. And then we're going to switch and do the other leg, the other lunge position. 5, 10, 15 ladder. Then we're going to go straight into one more round of squats. 5, 10, 15. 15. Lunges <laughs> and lunges. I'm just smiling Woo! all the time, and I'm not quite sure why I'm just like over here pulsing with a huge smile. Right. That's fine. <laughs> I'm like, am I in a workout video? I don't know. So we're doing the five pulses. Quick Eight, break on the way up. Nine, Ten pulses. Ten. So these guys are on 15 pulses, and then we're going to go straight through that whole series again. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. No breaks, right wow. into the <gasps> squat. Okay. So these guys are gonna do five, ten, fifteen again. If you just want to do five and ten, if you feel like you don't want to do that full fifteen, then that's okay. Gauge this to where you feel like you are at. These guys are gonna do five, ten, fifteen for the squats, for the lunges, and then for the lunges. Oh wow, quads are burning. Burning. Quads are burning. Make sure that as we do these, we're keeping our knees over our feet. It's easy as we give the feet to allow those knees to start to dive in. So make sure that you're always paying attention to your technique and your mechanics. Keep those knees over your feet. Make sure that you're, when you're doing a squat, you're sinking back. You're not hinging forward. But now we're in the lunges. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm lunges, 10. Are we doing that? 15, 15. 15. 5, 10, 15 here. <laughs> <laughs> Making sure in this position that as we lunge, we're not letting the knee travel over the foot, so the knee is staying right over the foot. 11, 12, There's a tough audience here for these two. 15. I like it better when Mary's not here because I can just make fun of Lindsay. You're welcome, Lindsay. I'm Thanks. an ally. Thanks, Mary. We're teaming up Five. against you. Like <laughs> so I think that they're at the uh, 10 Five. holes. Is yep. that right? Six, yep. seven, eight, nine. And then a pulse 15, 15 and then we're going to be done with the strength session. Two, three, four, five, 14. 15. Wow, that's hard. <sighs> Good work. You'll not see Merit back here in this video. <laughs> She's too rough on you. One more time. Quick feet. Let's see your quick feet. Come on. All right. So we're going to get into our power series. And... We're going to do one exercise that we did in week four, but we're, we're going to add a little bit of speed to it. And adding speed to an exercise is going to add the power component. And then we're going to do a new exercise, uh, and then that's going to be the entire power uh, component of the program today. The thing with power in ballistic plyometric type exercises is that a lot goes a long way. So we don't need to really hammer this down. Um, the next time, week six, we're going to do a little bit more power, but we don't need to spend a lot of time doing power. We just need to kind of touch on it at this point. So the first exercise we're going to do is the lunge to wall drive. Lizzie's going to use this rack right here. You're going to use a wall or anything stationary. So she's going to be in that lunge position. She's going to come up in that running position, making sure that that knee's nice and high for that hot cup of coffee, making sure that this leg is an extension behind her, making sure that the glute is nice and engaged, making sure that the heel is nice and high. We're going to do two sets of these, six to eight. And on the second set, we're gonna add another component. So she's gonna come up really quick, boom, nice and fast. And then the heel's gonna come down and then it's gonna come back up. So we're gonna add an additional heel lift in the second set of six to eight. So Lindsay's gonna do a set of eight. Yep. And the first set is gonna be just nice and quick from the lunge position, come up fast, drive that knee, pause for one second, and then she's gonna go right back into it. Driving up, nice and tall, good. And when she's in that position, her chest is nice and high, so she's not leaning into the wall. She's doing a great job. Nice drive, getting that knee or that heel nice and high. Almost like you're sprinting, and you want to have that perfect sprinting form in the backside of your mechanics, driving the leg behind you, which is going to propel your body forward. Make sure that you're breathing. When you come up into the wall, make sure that you're breathing. It's easy to hold your breath when you hold the wall, and it's even easier to hold your breath when you're driving out of the backside. So make sure that you're breathing the entire time. It's smart to try to exhale. So from this position, exhaling as you drive up and forward is preferred. Nice. We switched too. And we switched. She had done eight. So she just did the first one on the other leg. So she's 
trying to come up nice and quick. And we can tell that she doesn't have the same speed on this right side. We know that this right leg has been a little bit weaker and it's been a little bit more unstable. The, the strength and the stability seems to have improved over the last four weeks, uh, but we can still see that she doesn't have quite the same power, which is not that surprising. Um, so this might be an exercise that she just has to be a little bit more focused, trying to get a little bit more speed out of that right side, just to conjure up a little bit more of that power and contraction velocity. And what number is that? This is eight. This is eight. Driving up and forward, you can tell that she struggles a little bit on that side. That's okay. It's okay if we have imbalances, as long as we can identify them and then um, we can address them. So we're gonna do one more set of eight. This time as she drives up, she's gonna pause and do that additional heel drop, heel lift. We're gonna get into a calf a little bit. So she's up, heel comes down, heel comes up. That's one, we're gonna do a set of eight. Two. Good job, and she's making sure that as she comes up forward, she's keeping that front knee nice and high, so we can keep that hot cup of coffee right there. That's three, you're gonna feel this quite a bit more in your calf. If you feel like you're not ready for the additional heel lift, then just do another set where you're coming straight up, and you're coming straight up onto your toes, and not doing the heel drop. If you wanna do the heel drop, do the heel drop. If the heel drop feels really good, you can always do two heel drops. You can modify it and do a progression rather than a regression. Coming up nice and quick. What number was that? This will be eight. This will be eight. Drive, perfect position. Hip is in extension, boot is turned on. Now the right side, or the left side. Right side. Right side, sorry. We're all confused here. Yeah, you can tell that she's getting fatigued. She's not as quick on that side, but that's okay. She still wants to have really good technique. She wants to be as quick as her body is ready for. She's adding that heel lift. You can tell that her cap is strong because the heel lift is nice and clean. Just coming up out of that is just a little bit slow. Your parents are going to be so embarrassed <laughs> of that <laughs> powerful right leg. They might just own me. Nice. Good job. Uh, so swing that left leg through. So not only is the right leg a little bit slow, but the left leg didn't swing through as quickly. And swinging the left leg through is going to help you get into the muscles in the back of that standing leg a little bit better. All right, so that was two sets of the lunge to wall drive. We'll take a little bit of a break and we'll explain what this next exercise is. Uh, we're going to do three sets on each leg of six to eight. Lindsay's going to do three sets of eight. So you can use uh, like a step. Um, if you don't have anything in the living room or if you don't have a step near the living room, then kind of watch us do this and then go find a step somewhere in your house or somewhere outside. Um, sometimes you can use like a, a um, like a curb or something that has a little bit of an elevation to it. Uh, so hopefully you can find something to do this exercise. So this is going to be a runner jump. So we're going to have one foot on the step or the curb or the box. And you're going to drive off of that and come up and then come back down, drive and come up. So take a break. So we're going to do a set of eight and eight, quick break, eight and eight, quick break, eight and eight. If you want to stop at six, go ahead and stop at six. Making sure that you're trying to get a little bit of height as you jump. So you're not just coming up, you're trying to get a little bit of height as you jump. And let's all go for it. And drive. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And she's gonna switch. Rock. Trying to coordinate the arms. Two, three, four. Make sure you drive that knee forward. Lizzie's doing a really good job. So make sure that as you drive off of that foot that the other leg is swinging forward. We have these really complicated neurological pathways that allow when one hip flexor is really engaged, it's gonna help augment the engagement of the extensors on the opposite leg. So use that swing leg to help drive force into the ground on the plant leg. Second set of eight. Driving more, good job. So Lindsay's foot's leaving the ground every time. She's breathing really well. She's driving that knee forward. She's swinging her arms in unison. That was eight. She's gonna switch. She's gonna figure out which arm goes with which leg. <laughs> the hardest part of the exercise. <laughs> Three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, and just a little bit of a break. If you want to take a long break with this, that's okay. We're not going to take a very large break. Take as long of a break as you want. We don't need this to be a really high heart rate exercise. 
We do want this to be very clean and crisp, and we want you to be able to generate some power into that box. So we will do one more set of six to eight. Maybe Lindsay will finish us off with another joke. <laughs> no guarantees. I might be too out of breath. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So she's not getting as high that round. She's getting a little bit fatigued. She's concerned that she has to come up with another joke. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Great job, team. One more joke. One more joke. You gotta wait till next week. Oh, man. I don't got it yet. <laughs>